Have you ever been in the store and you see something so sweet and adorable and you want to figure out how to make it yourself? Watch today's video and I will share how that same thing happened to me and how we figured it out. Just recently, Ross and I uh, were in Panguitch, Utah, celebrating our 29th wedding anniversary, and we came along this adorable little trivet, a little hot pad. It was at a little Hallmark store, didn't have our wallet or anything to do any shopping, but I thought it was adorable, so I snapped a picture of it to then hopefully figure out how to make it. It is super simple. This hot pad is knitted, but do not let that scare you. I am not a knitter. I have basic, basic knitting skills. I'm a crocheter, but on this one, you're going to be able to do this. The large uh, rope makes it um, super doable. You can see the pattern. It is something that I picked up on really quick, and I'm gonna show you how you can make it. The supplies you're going to need is, this is six millimeter cotton cord. I have the link down below. You're going to need about 75 feet of this cord. You're also going to need knitting needles. These are size nine, and you're going to need long ones. They have short ones, uh, but you're going to want to have long ones. Uh, size eight or nine work really well for this project, and you're going to need a large crochet hook. I like adding a little piece of leather with a grommet in the corner, totally optional, but if you're going to do that, the leather is a one inch by four inch piece of leather, and then this is a half inch grommet. To start your project, you're going to want to measure off roughly 36 inches of your cording. At the 36 inch mark roughly, we're going to make a slip knot. So the way I do that is I put it over my index finger and thumb, give it a twist, and this is the tail. We want to draw up the actual string. So here I've drawn up the string and made a slip knot, and you're going to slip that onto one of your knitting needles and draw it up nice, uh, not super tight, but just to the bottom of the needle. So at this point, you're going to only use one needle and to cast on is what the technical term is. We need to put, this is one, but then we need to do a dozen more loops onto your needle. And to make that happen, hold it with your tail closest to your body, not the, the cord, so your tail is closest to your body, so this is facing me, and you're going to put your index finger and thumb in that triangle, or in that little teepee, I guess you call it, and we are going to make a V. So I'm gonna hold it there so you can see what I'm doing. I have my um, tails are being held by my ring finger and pinky, and they're looped over my index finger and my thumb. So I have a, a V. We're going to go on the outside of my thumb, the outside of my finger, and pull it into that hole. So that is one. Go back to your V outside of my thumb, outside of my finger, and then there's that hole, and that's two. Okay, I believe that's 12. So this is my first one that I started on with the slip knot. So there's two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12. And you'll have this much of a tail left over. Uh, you can go as short as a, a three or four or five inch tail. If at this point you only have a nub, um, I would tear it out and start again because you're going to want to be able to hide this in your project. So you, at this point you need to have at least four inches left over. So now we're getting ready to uh, do the actual project. This is where you need the other needle. And so this is a knit stitch. This is all you're going to do throughout the whole project is a knit stitch. So you're gonna take your free needle and you slip it underneath your needle. So we're making an X we're, and we're in that first uh, stitch. And you're going to take your uh, yarn, your string, not your tail, take your string. You're gonna go under and you're gonna go into the, the crick of that X and you're going to pull back the loop and now we have it on this 
we have one here and then we have the remaining ones on the other side. So this is what you have at this point. So now we're going to go into the next stitch. Same thing, go on the bottom side, go underneath the other needle, take your string, go around the bottom into that crick and pull it off. We're going to go under, take your string, we're going to go from the bottom to the top to go into the, the little void there of the X and we're going to slip it off and make the stitch go on to here. Roll it over and that's our last stitch for that row. So here is what you have. So we have, um, the, the cool thing with this, there's really no counting. On crocheting, I always have to count the number of stitches on each row. But if it looks like there's nothing, uh, you know, jumping out at you that it's uh, a loop somewhere, you should have 13 loops on here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 13. And so that is all you need to know how to do. You do the exact same thing row after row until it becomes a square. So here we start again. You have your empty needle. We're going to go under. We're going to wrap it and pull it back. We're going to go under. And I do pull this because I want it to be nice and even. I pull that one a little tight before I wrap it around and slip it off. Go under, wrap it around, and slip it off. Oh, missed that one. So here we go. We're going to just redo it and slip it off. So at this point, when I was teaching a friend how to do this, I thought it was important to see if, if I set these needles down in a bag, which I did, and then I pulled them back out and like, okay, do they go like this or do they go like this? I could not in my head figure out which one I was working on. The way to know which way it is, this string your, your working string is always on the back side of your project. So if you threw these down, your kids come and interrupt you, and you, you're, they're like this, and you're like, I have no idea which way they go, just lay them down and have the string away from you. If you lay it down like this, the string is facing you, and so that is the wrong direction. So put it like this, and you should be fine. So then you can just continue knowing that the string is on the far side away from your body. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this till it's almost a square. And then I will show you how you measure it and how you finish off that row. When you get pretty close to it feeling like it is a square, here is how you can uh, test to see how much longer you have to go. So take your empty uh, needle and just measure how far it is, so from side to side. So put the tip there, I'm going to pinch my finger there, and then I'm going to turn. And you can see that I'm about a row or two away from this being a square, but that gives you a good way to uh, reference. So to get the uh, project off of your uh, needle, it's called casting off. And typically you don't need um, an extra hook, but this cording is so thick, the only way I have been able to successfully do this is if you have a large crochet hook. So this one's a size J, um, just something that's nice and big. So go ahead and do two stitches. You start the row with two stitches. Okay, so now you have your project here and you have two here. Slip out your um, one with only two. Take a crochet hook and put it through and we're going to draw the one that is closest to the rest of your project. We're going to draw it through to be just now one loop. You take your empty needle and put it back in and draw it up. 
So you always have to have two stitches on this needle. So there's only one there now. So we're going to make two. Slide out your needle, put in your crochet hook, and we're going to draw through the one that's closest to your project. We're going to draw it through to make one loop. Slip back in your knitting needle. And there's one here needs to be two so we're going to do the second one slip it out pull through your loop we have one and put back in your needle and so you're going to continue that all the way across We're down to the last two on the project. So you continue, slide out your needle, and we're going to pull through here. Give yourself enough slack and cut off a good, at least a four inch tail. Take your crochet hook and pull the tail through the loop. And I like to um, square this up a little bit so I, to hide your tail, draw it through down to one row down low, below it. And then we are going to just follow one of the rows by, to hide your tail. So there was that one. Now I'm going to bring it down the other way. And I do this for at least four stitches to make sure it's nice and secure and hidden. So this was the beginning and so you're going to do the same thing. We're going to just bring it to this row and hide it in this uh, stitching. If you want to add the little leather uh, tab with a grommet, to make that happen you're going to need a piece of leather that is roughly one inch by four inch and you're going to need a half inch grommet. The set that I got from Harbor Freight comes with the tools that you need uh, to set the grommet. So what I do is I just eyeball my project and find a corner or an edge that maybe is a little looser of a hole and it looks like right here is a good one. So I just fold my leather to where so I can get through one of the corners and I bring up my leather, see if I like the way it looks. That looks pretty good. With the um, kit, it gives you a cutting tool. So just center that where it would look really good, which that looks pretty good. And you might have to give it some, depending on how sharp your knife is, some pretty good hits. Oh, that went through really nice. Okay, so we're done with the, the knife. Now you take your setting tool. The grommet has two pieces. One has kind of like a crown and one is flat. So put the crown down in the setting tool or the setting base, I should say. Lay your circle over, your cutout circle over the crown. Here is your flat piece. Lay it over that uh, layer, put your tool in the center and give it a probably good four or five hits. And that's all there is to it. And now you're done. Okay, I tell you, I don't, I've made a dozens of these. Uh, I just absolutely love making them. I was so shocked that um, I'm not a knitter. I'm a crocheter. I was so shocked at how easy it was to pick up on the knit stitch. So when you're doing your project, if you have any questions, please comment down below. I would always love to hear from you. But as always, thank you for watching DIY on the House.